Hey everyone, it's Jenna from Cruise Blog. I just took my first celebrity cruise after 20 Royal Caribbean cruises, but next time I'm going back to Royal Caribbean, and here's why. They say the grass is always greener on the other side, and after 20 Royal Caribbean cruises, I booked my first celebrity cruise. I thought I was ready for a change, but my seven nights on board solidified my preference for Royal Caribbean. I've been mostly loyal to Royal ever since my first Royal Caribbean cruise three years ago. Even though I've occasionally ventured to other cruise lines such as Princess and MSC, I've always found myself returning to my cruising routes. Royal Caribbean, in my opinion, has the most innovative ships at sea. I've never once had a bad experience on board, even when cruising on the line's oldest and smallest ships. With high quality entertainment, top-notch dining, and a diverse array of onboard thrills, I had little reason to look elsewhere for a cruise vacation. Throughout the past year, however, I read about the experience of my fellow cruise blog writers on celebrity cruises. I was intrigued by the cruise line's unique itineraries, adult-focused ships, and more upscale atmosphere. So when planning a summer cruise to Europe, I booked a seven-night Norwegian Fjords cruise on Celebrity Silhouette. I figured it was time to experience what celebrity was all about. I boarded my first celebrity cruise feeling optimistic about my next week on board, but I quickly realized that I preferred Royal Caribbean. From the lucrative loyalty status perks to dining options, here's why I'm going back to Royal Caribbean for my next cruise. The first reason is the loyalty perks. Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society offers more useful benefits compared to Celebrity's Captain's Club. Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruises enable guests to match their loyalty status from one cruise line to the other, but the benefits are not equal. For my travel style, I found that Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society offered more lucrative benefits. As a Diamond Plus member with Royal Caribbean, my status was matched to Celebrity's Elite Plus status. This meant I could enjoy access to exclusive parties, a continental breakfast in a specialty restaurant each morning, discounts on select add-ons, and two complimentary bags of laundry, among other benefits. I appreciated the benefits not offered by Royal Caribbean, including a free day of access to the ship's thermal suite and a complimentary scoop of gelato at the Gelateria. That being said, I didn't make use of all the benefits, especially because my travel partner did not have status in the captain's club, so I didn't care to go to private events alone. I missed certain aspects of Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society, like grabbing evening hors d'oeuvres in the Crown Lounge and using my buy one, get one free benefit at specialty restaurants. Most of all though, I missed my free diamond drinks. My favorite benefit of the Crown and Anchor Society are the diamond drink vouchers, which offer a number of complimentary drinks each day depending on your loyalty status. As a Diamond Plus member, I receive five drink vouchers a day. On board a Royal Caribbean cruise, I can use these drink vouchers wherever and whenever I want with few restrictions. In addition, the vouchers can be used ashore at Perfect Day at Coco Cay. I'm not a huge drinker, but I love utilizing the diamond drink vouchers to sample cocktails around the ship. Celebrity Cruises also provides a drink benefit to those with elite status and higher, but it pales in comparison to what Royal Caribbean offers. You can order drinks from a happy hour menu from 5 to 7 p.m. each evening, While you can enjoy as many drinks as you'd like during this time, the selection of beverages is extremely limited. Forget trying the Martini Bar's inventive Bananas Foster cocktail or a refreshing pina colada on the pool deck. The happy hour drinks were far more basic, such as a vodka soda or glass of wine. I was still grateful to receive complimentary beverages during my sailing, but I really missed the flexibility of the Crown and Anchor Society's drink benefit. Another reason I'm going back to Royal Caribbean next time is that I thought I would prefer an adult-focused cruise but I honestly missed Royal Caribbean's onboard activities. As a 20-something without kids, I occasionally find Royal Caribbean's family-friendly atmosphere, particularly on the cruise line's newest ships, unnecessary for my travel style. While I would have loved that carousel and trendy teen club as a kid, these features don't necessarily appeal to me as an adult. Nevertheless, it's pretty easy to escape the kid-focused activities on Royal Caribbean ships. Most of these amenities are located in a few select areas of the ship, and by venturing elsewhere, you can find a quieter, adult-centered experience. Even so, the lack of family-focused activities on celebrity cruises caught my eye. Although the cruise line still has a kids' club and activities like family karaoke, there's a noticeable lack of thrilling attractions like water slides and zip lines on celebrity ships. I thought this would make the cruise more enjoyable as an adult traveler, since there would be, presumably, fewer screaming kids running around the ship. Instead, I found myself missing Royal Caribbean's unique attractions during my celebrity cruise, Despite attending activities like watercolor class, trivia, and a murder mystery game show, I actually missed my workouts on Royal Caribbean's rock climbing wall and afternoon rounds of mini golf. 
It's easy to assume activities like the Flowrider indoor skydiving simulator and bumper cars are meant for children, but these activities are a lot of fun for adults too. During my seven nights on Celebrity Silhouette, I came to the realization that I prefer high energy active activities on board a cruise ship instead of just sitting on a chair for a round of trivia. It's unlikely that Celebrity will ever offer these types of thrills in the future, so I'll probably book my future cruises with Royal Caribbean instead, despite the higher number of kids and families on board. The third reason I'm going back to Royal Caribbean next time is because of the entertainment. It's hard to beat the variety of entertainment on Royal Caribbean, and after sailing on five separate cruise lines, Royal Caribbean's entertainment has been the creme de la creme. Entertainment is always quite low on my list of reasons to book a particular ship or cruise line. I always appreciate the amount of theater shows available while cruising, but if I'm being honest, I don't always attend the shows. Most evenings, I prefer listening to music at a bar instead or lounging on the outdoor decks to watch the sunset. The exception to this is when I cruise with Royal Caribbean. Aside from the oldest Vision and Radiance class cruise ships, all of the cruise line's vessels offer unique entertainment venues, whether it's the ice skating shows, technology-focused performances at 270, Broadway productions, or diving spectaculars at the Aqua Theater. With so many unique venues, Royal Caribbean is more the exception than the rule. Traditionally, cruise ships have always offered productions in a theater, and theater shows were the only style of performance offered on Celebrity Silhouette. I attended the ship's production of On Broadway while on board, which featured live music and choreography from a selection of Broadway shows, including Hairspray and Les Mis. I didn't have any complaints with the show, but it of course couldn't compare to the full-length Broadway productions available on Royal Caribbean. Both cruise lines fared equally well when it came to other entertainment, such as live bands and comedians, yet if I had to pick a cruise line based on entertainment, I would choose Royal Caribbean in a heartbeat. Next, Celebrity offered upscale dining, but I prefer Royal Caribbean's food options. Nearly every review I read about Celebrity raved about the cruise line's food, but I honestly prefer the dining venues on Royal Caribbean. Given the positive reviews, this was one of the biggest surprises of my vacation. Food is so subjective that I was apprehensive to even include a food review on this list, so my opinion should be taken with a grain of salt. If you ask five cruisers to review food amongst a list of cruise lines, you'd likely see five drastically different rankings. For instance, I found the food on both of my MSC cruises to be excellent. The emphasis on high quality Italian food matched my palate perfectly. Others, however, rank MSC dead last in their rankings on cruise ship food. Some even call it inedible. All that said, I thought the food on Celebrity Silhouette was not as seasoned as I prefer, and menu options were sometimes too elegant for my taste. As a traveler who loves spicy international flavors, I'm not sure I'm in the cruise line's target demographic for menu options. I enjoyed the variety of food at the buffet, and there were items I've rarely seen in Royal Caribbean's buffet, including hummus, ceviche, and even lobster mac and cheese. Despite this, I felt that most dishes could have used more flavor. Most of the time, I stuck to the stir-fry station so I could customize the dish to my liking with extra spice and seasonings. As far as the main dining room, I found myself missing Royal Caribbean's menu. I love how Royal Caribbean incorporates a theme into each evening, whether Italian or French night. At times, I felt Celebrity tried a little too hard to make classic dishes elevated. Instead of a classic basil pesto found in Royal Caribbean's main dining room, for instance, Celebrity offered a more enhanced version, made with walnut arugula pesto, asparagus, tomato confit, and parmesan cheese. While fancier, the dish was quite earthy in taste, and I felt the classic dish would have tasted better, despite being more simple. Again, food is a subjective topic, and perhaps my palate is not as refined as other cruisers on board. There were plenty of dishes I enjoyed during the week, especially the Indian curries, but I simply prefer the food offerings and menus offered on Royal Caribbean. All that being said, I would still book a cruise on Celebrity, but mostly for the itinerary. Even though I preferred Royal Caribbean over Celebrity, one reason I would book a Celebrity cruise over the former is because of the itinerary options. Celebrity Cruises offers a wider range of itineraries compared to Royal Caribbean. You can find cruises to countries like Argentina, Peru, Samoa, and India, along with more traditional itineraries. The line even offers cruises to Antarctica, which allow guests to sail by the continent and enjoy views from on board, as well as expedition cruises to the Galapagos. Royal Caribbean still offers intriguing itinerary options, and I've sailed on the line in North America, Europe, and Australia. Nonetheless, as someone who chooses cruises primarily for the destination, celebrities' offerings are worth browsing. If I were choosing between a similar itinerary, I would likely choose Royal Caribbean over Celebrity. If I wanted to book that bucket list cruise to Patagonia though, I wouldn't hesitate to book another Celebrity cruise. At the end of the day, sometimes it takes trial and error to find the best cruise line for you. 
Every cruiser has their own travel style. Some prefer the party atmosphere of a carnival cruise, while others enjoy a luxury experience on board a cruise line like Silver Sea. There's no right or wrong way to cruise, and sometimes it takes a few tries to find the cruise line that fits you best. After taking so many Royal Caribbean cruises, I couldn't help but wonder if there was a better cruise option out there. Yet after trying five cruise lines in the past three years, I've come to appreciate the quality and consistency of Royal Caribbean's product. In the end, I'm happy I tried Celebrity Cruises. I made wonderful memories during my time in Norway, and I had nothing but great experiences with the ship's condition, service from crew members, and itinerary. Yet ultimately, I'm still loyal to Royal. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed hearing why I am going back to Royal Caribbean after my first Celebrity Cruise. Have you tried the two cruise lines and which do you prefer? I'm very curious to hear your opinion in the comments below. Until next time, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on those notifications so that you're notified every time we post a new video. See you next time. Happy cruising.